Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss Normand, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to write a custom Grafana dashboard. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how I build a dashboard from scratch to monitor a virtual machine's key resource usage. The dashboard that you're gonna build is gonna look like this. It will include CPU utilization over time, memory usage over time, disk space used and available over time, and finally, network traffic. If you're a system administrator for an application or maybe even for a cluster of VMs, these are key metrics that you would wanna monitor on those VMs or on that VM. In addition to Grafana, there are two other dependencies. The data source that we're gonna be using is Prometheus and the data collector that we're gonna be using is Node Exporter. Node Exporter is going to collect all of that CPU and memory usage and the other metrics data and it will expose that data on an endpoint that Prometheus will then scrape and provide uh, to Grafana when Grafana queries Prometheus. I've seen some tutorials on Grafana dashboards where uh, they basically showcase the import feature uh, in Grafana where you can import a, a pre-built uh, dashboard, but that's not what we're gonna do in this tutorial. In this tutorial, we're gonna build each panel from scratch and form uh, each of the Prometheus queries ourselves rather than using the import uh, feature in Grafana. And I'm not saying that the import feature in Grafana isn't useful. I think that's an extremely useful utility, but you'll definitely learn more if you build each panel in the dashboard yourself and form the queries from scratch. Now that you know what we're gonna build, grab a coffee and let's get to it. The first thing that I wanna show is the endpoint that Node Exporter exposes uh, data on so that Prometheus can scrape that data and uh, Grafana can then query Prometheus. So Node Exporter is running on my VM and it's running on uh, port 9100 and the endpoint that I can access the, the Node Exporter data on is the uh, metrics uh, endpoint. And when I access the metrics endpoint, I get pretty much all of the data that Node Exporter is collecting from this virtual machine. Now let's go into Grafana and in Grafana, I am going to uh, create a new dashboard. And in order to create a new dashboard, I just come up here to the plus sign and I hit dashboard. And we're presented with this screen where we can add a new panel. And the first metric that we're going to uh, track is going to be CPU utilization. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and click add new panel. Now in this panel screen, we can uh, select which kind of visualization we want. We do want to keep a graph uh, visualization in this case, and then under uh, under the actual graph uh, itself, the graph grid, we can enter a metric. So from here, we can select the data source. I'm going to keep it as default, uh, which is Prometheus. So we're going the data source is going to be Prometheus that has our node exporter data, and then we can form a Prometheus uh, PromQL query uh, in the in this metrics field here. So the first metric that we need is the virtual machine's total CPU time in seconds. And to get that, we just type in node CPU seconds and then total. And from here, we'll specify the uh, job name that we wanna query as well as the instance that we wanna query. So in this case, my job name is uh, Jenkins node. And my instance is gonna be localhost 9100, which is where uh, node exporter is exposing that metrics endpoint. I'm also gonna specify that the mode shouldn't be uh, idle mode for CPU time. So I'm gonna do use the not operator and then specify mode uh, not equal to idle. So it's gonna take all of the modes like system and user uh, CPU time, but we're gonna ignore idle time. And when this loads the graph, you can see that uh, CPU time just continuously increases. And that's because uh, node CPU seconds total is a counter. Um, and it gives us a kind of a hint here on how we can modify our query to Prometheus. It says that it's a counter and that we should apply the rate function. And we are gonna, we're gonna apply the I rate function or the instant rate function rather than uh, rate because we'll get a little bit better resolution of the data. But as uh, Grafana is suggesting, we want the rate of, of CPU time rather than just the counter of how much 
uh, CPU time there has been since the machine was started. So to get the rate, let's uh, invoke the irate uh, function. And the irate function takes uh, as a parameter the interval of time over which you want it to uh, uh, query data points. And in this case, we'll just do one minute. And we'll let that load. And now you can actually see the rate of CPU time per second over time. One thing to notice about the legend in this graph is that it breaks it down by uh, mode and you can see a few other labels. And one thing to notice is that I only have one CPU on this virtual machine. Uh, if I had multiple CPUs, you would have you would see CPU zero, one, you know, however many CPUs I have. And since I only have one CPU, um, I would like to remove the CPU label. Um, but also if you had multiple CPUs and you wanted to just see uh, the overall CPU utilization across all CPUs, we would want to use an aggregate operator and we'll use average and then specify without CPU. Uh, so that's going to remove the CPU label from this uh, particular query. And we'll let that load. Oh, and I forgot to provide parentheses around our second part of the query. And uh, so that removes the CPU label from here. And if we had multiple CPUs, this would be the aggregate of, this would be the average utilization across all CPUs. Um, if we weren't, if we didn't take the average across all CPUs and we had multiple CPUs, then our utilization would be would show that it was over 100% because each CPU uh, can can have one uh, at least one second of CPU time per second, right? So if we had four CPUs, we could see, potentially see 400% of 400% utilization when in reality it's just 100% utilization across the board. The next thing I want to do is just clean up the legend a little bit. So I actually want to. Uh, pull the mode and just specifically target the mode in the legend because that's the only thing that's different between uh, each of these uh, legend items. So if I add mode here, now I get a much cleaner legend and it breaks it down by IO wait time, uh, system, user, nice, etc. And so now we've got a much, uh, a much better graph of CPU utilization. Now the last thing that we want to change here is the uh, left y-axis here, we want to make sure that this is represented in percent uh, rather than uh, an integer. So if I go down here to axes and then the y-axis, I'm going to just type in percent and uh, we'll use uh, percent zero to, uh, zero to 100 here, or zero to one. And now we have the correct percentage and we have the CPU time. And I'll update the panel title as well to, to represent CPU uh, utilization. Let's go ahead and save. And I'm going to call this uh, host uh, resource usage example. We'll save that. And now we have our first uh, we have our first panel in our dashboard representing CPU utilization for the VM that I'm currently operating on. Now let's add an additional panel. We'll add uh, one next to the CPU utilization. So let's go in here and uh, this panel is going to map out uh, our memory, our memory usage. So what we want is we want to know what used memory, uh, what our used memory is on this virtual machine. We want uh, our free memory, our buffers, and cached memory. We're going to use a, a graph visualization again. And the title, I'll just update it to memory usage. And our first query is going to be used memory. And to calculate used memory, uh, we're first going to uh, get the total amount of memory. So that's going to be node memory mem total and in bytes. And we'll pull 
uh, the labels instance and job in here. So instance is going to be localhost 91 since that's where our node exporter is uh, hosted. And the job is going to be Jenkins node. Uh, that's just the name of, of this particular job. And from total memory, we're going to subtract uh, free memory. And that's going to be node memory mem free bytes. And for the same labels. We'll also subtract uh, cache memory. And finally, uh, subtract buffers. Whoops. Okay. And this should get us uh, free memory in bytes. And you can see now that we have uh, memory, used memory. And let's update the legend here so that it, that's represented as used memory. Uh, one thing that I noticed on the y-axis is that we have the y-axis is in bytes. Uh, so let's update that by going down here to the, the axes. And uh, we're going to use update the unit to be uh, bytes IEC. And when that updates, we can see now the, the bytes are represented in gigabytes. So that makes it a little bit easier to, to read. The next query that we'll add here is uh, just uh, buffers. Let's update the legend to buffers on that one. And uh, the next one is going to be cached memory. And then uh, finally, we're going to uh, graph uh, free memory. Free bytes. You'll notice that it still um, graphs out uh, free. Whoops. So free memory is actually still graphed, even though I haven't provided uh, parameters into it. And that's, uh, I believe that's because there's only one instance in, uh, to query in this case. Okay, so now we have uh, all of our memory mapped out and our memory usage mapped out. And let's go ahead and save that. And hit apply. And now we have memory usage and CPU. The next metric that I want to track is going to be disk space. So I want use and available disk space. I'm going to drag this panel down to the bottom here and we'll add a new panel and I'm going to get the, uh, the first one is going to be uh, used disk space. And then the next panel that uh, I add is going to be uh, available disk space. So to get the used uh, disk space, uh, all we have to do is uh, reference node file system and then we'll get the available bytes. 
from our job here, Jenkins node. And then the instance is going to be our node exporter. In addition to providing the job and instance name, I also have to specify which devices that I want to, uh, I, I have to specify if I don't want to track any devices. And there are a couple of devices that I don't want to track usage for. Um, and the first one is going to be, uh, device shouldn't be equal to, uh, device and then loop devices. So I don't want to track any loop devices. I also don't want to track uh, temp, uh, the temp file system or the namespace file system. So again, I'm going to pass in a query here uh, for the device, tempfs and then the last device that I don't want to track is going to be the uh, GNOME virtual file system. So now we're going to subtract available bytes from total, uh, the total available bytes on the file system. And so this actually shouldn't be available bytes. This should be, uh, it should be total bytes. So from total bytes, we're going to subtract the available, uh, the available bytes on the file system. So we'll su subtract node uh, file system available bytes, and uh, we'll only specify the uh, Jenkins job and the instance. And let's see what that returns. Okay, so now we have uh, the the available. I'll put this up here in the title. Uh, the available disk space, and in the y-axis we have bytes. So this isn't very readable. So let's update the uh, the units to be bytes in the left axis. Okay, and now we get uh, gigabytes in the left axis, so that's a lot more readable. And then under the legend, we we have a lot of labels included in the legend, but the only labels that we want in the legend is device. So what I'm going to do is uh, pull out the device from from there and just have the legend include only the device name or the device label. Also, I said that this was uh, available, but this isn't actually available. This is used uh, space on disk. So let's go ahead and save uh, this panel. And we'll apply it to our dashboard. So now we've got used disk space. I'm going to just drag it across here so we have a little bit more. Uh, a little bit more space there, a little extra real estate. And the next uh, query that we're going to add, or the next panel that we're going to add, rather, is going to be available disk space. So let's go ahead and add a panel. I'm going to drag it below used here. And it is going to be a graph. So uh, to get the uh, available uh, disk space, what we're going to do is we're going to take node file system available bytes. Just make sure that's correct. Yep. Available bytes. And our job is going to equal Jenkins node and the instance is our uh, node exporter. And uh, similar to the uh, to the other graph, we don't want to include the devices for uh, loop the loop uh, devices. So to not include those, I'll just add this uh, small uh, expression here for loop devices.
And then again, we don't want to include the temp or namespace file systems. So tempfs and uh, <clears throat> NSFS. And then we also don't want to include the GNOME uh, file system. And then this gives us our available, uh, available disk space. I'll also update the legend here so we only see the device in the legend, the device name in the legend. And that looks a lot cleaner. And then the last thing we want to do is update that y-axis so that it's in bytes. And now we have uh, the bytes on the gigabytes, a much more human readable uh, format in the y-axis. So let's go ahead and save and apply that. So now our dashboard's looking pretty pretty filled out. The last uh, metric that, that we wanna do is network traffic. So we wanna see traffic, received traffic, and transmitted traffic. So let's go up and add one more panel, and we'll bring this down to uh, the bottom here. And to get network traffic, what we're gonna do is take the rate of the received, the total received bytes and the rate of the total transmitted bytes uh, from our virtual machine. And it'll be uh, ordered by uh, the interfaces. So to get that, let's go ahead and we'll do uh, irate and then node network uh, receive bytes total and then that's going to be on our uh, job our Jenkins node and the instance is going to be localhost <clears throat> we're going to uh, we're going to do this over a, take it over a five minute interval period and then let's see if that brings up any uh, data it does so we have our received uh, bytes received data the rate of bytes received data over time broken down uh, we we can see the labels uh, in the legend here what we want is the device so let's break this down to the device and now we actually have the interfaces uh, as the only label displayed in the legend so that uh, that's a little bit easier to read so the second query is going to be the total bytes transmitted. And uh, just to specify the interface, that the interface here is for received bytes, let's add that to the legend. Now let's take the rate of bytes transmitted. So we're going to do irate network transmit bytes total. And We'll do Jenkins node. The instance is going to be localhost 91. And then the interval will be over five minutes. We'll break down the legend, uh, same as before, but now we'll say it's transmit. So now the, the legend is broken down by receive and transmit for each of the interfaces. Now, one thing that we have here is is the the left y-axis is kind of off. We don't we want to specify the units uh, that we want to track this in. So we're going to track it in kilobits per second. So now we're going to do kilobytes per second as our unit. Okay. So that now we have a, a much uh, easier to read graph uh, when we zoom in here. And then finally, let's update the panel tile to represent that this is network traffic. I'm going to go ahead and save our dashboard. So we added uh, available this space and we added network traffic. And we'll go ahead and apply that. I'll kind of stretch this across a little bit. 
Great. And there we have it. That's uh, pretty much the whole dashboard. These are some of the key metrics that you would want to track as a system administrator or someone who's responsible for maybe a cluster of servers or just a, a single uh, virtual machine in this case. Uh, we can see the, the key metrics outlined in this dashboard. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you uh, didn't get a chance to like follow along building the dashboard, uh, no worries. I, I will uh, export this dashboard into JSON format and, and provide a GitHub repository where you can download the JSON format and import it into uh, your own Grafana instance if you want to. If you like the video, please consider throwing a like on it and subscribing to the channel for more videos. Uh, and if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please leave them below in the comments. Thanks for watching.